Hello and welcome to this new After Effects tutorial. My name is Flo from flowmotion.eu and today I'm going to show you how you can create this mirror ball animation here. Let me tell you something. I have done this whole animation without the use of any third-party plugin. So we can simply build this from scratch with all the effects built in in After Effects. So let's get started. At first we have to create a new composition. We make it 1280 by 720 and a duration of 15 seconds is okay. And let's call this our mirror ball. But before we start creating the ball and the sphere, let's start with creating the single mirrors, the texture of our mirror ball. So for that we need a flat image and in this case it's a layer, so we go layer, new, solid. The color doesn't really matter and we make it comp size and hit OK. And for the effect we need a cell pattern effect, so let's type in cell and there we have it. We can now apply the effect by dragging it onto the footage here, onto the layer or if we have our solid selected we can simply double click on the effect. And now let's rename the solid by hitting return and we call it mirrors. By default the cell pattern effect doesn't really look like mirrors but we can change that. When we go through the different patterns you can directly see what type of effect this is. So let's go to Plates HQ and now we try to create square mirrors and we can achieve that by bringing down the disperse and as I'm scrubbing it through the left you can see what this does. It brings some structure into that chaos. And when I'm zooming in, you can see that they somehow blur into each other. And we can change that by increasing the sharpness. So something around 600 looks fine for me. And now you can also see that we have dark mirrors and brighter mirrors, which is quite nice because later on we want to create the look that the light is picking up some of those mirrors and they get brighter and darker so to make it look really realistic. And as the mirror ball is going to spin later on let's also animate those values. And we can do that by animating the evolution of this effect. You can see what this does when I'm dragging this wheel here. And to animate this we could either set two keyframes or let's make an expression. So I just zero this and when I now hold down the Alt key and click on the evolution stopwatch I can now type an expression in here and now let's type time times 200 and this just takes the time value from the timeline when I'm going to the one second mark so I'm just typing 1 into here. I'm now at the 1 second mark and we have a value of 200 because it's 1 second times 200. And when I scrub through it now you can see that it is continuously animating. Perfect. Exactly what we wanted. So we can close this layer hide it for a moment and create a new one. And let's call this one the gaps because now we want to make those black lines the gaps between the mirrors. And for that we also want to use the cell pattern effect. But this time instead of using the plates HQ we want to use the crystals HQ. Now you can directly see that it creates those black lines. 
that we want to use as gaps. But what I don't like is the fill of all of those elements. So let's bring up the contrast until we just can see black and white. And a value of about 1000 looks fine to me. And once again, we want to make those look like squares. So we bring the disperse down. But this time we don't bring it all the way to zero, but leave it a little bit up here about 0, 0,1 so that it looks a bit more natural. Now we can turn back on the mirrors layer and blend those two together with a different blending mode. So maybe let's try one of the color burn modes. Maybe the classic color burn. And this looks quite nice for me. Maybe I go down a little bit with the disperse. Okay, now we're already finished with our mirror wall texture. So now let's create a main comp composition, new composition, and we call it main comp. And hit OK. In the project window, we can now grab our mirror ball and drag it into our main composition. And now let's create a sphere. And you guessed it, we just type in sphere. And there we have it, the CC sphere effect. And we bring it out here and we can directly see that we have created a sphere. So and if we go into the light and shading options, we can play a little bit with them. We want to bring the light intensity down to about 55 and the light high back to zero. And this way I have more light over here and less on the right because later on I want it to look like the light is coming from the left. And to increase this effect we can go down with the ambient on the shading maybe to one so that we still see a little bit of the mirror ball on the right side. And you can also play around with the other settings. We can close this and go into the rotation values. And as we want to spin our mirror ball around the Y axis, we can once again use an expression for this. So hold down the Alt key click on the stopwatch and we can once again type time times 40 and our ball is spinning and as you can see the luminance values of all the different mirrors are changing all the time because everywhere the light later on is supposed to hit the mirror it gets brighter and where there's no light it gets darker perfect and now we can create our volumetric light. And for that, I use a very simple effect. I just use a radial fast blur that I apply to an adjustment layer. So we create a new adjustment layer. By the way, you can also create an adjustment layer by hitting Control, Alt, and Y. And we call this our fast blur. And we also type in fast blur here and get the CC radial fast blur. And with the amount, we can now control the length of our light streaks. So when I bring this up, you can see the streaks get longer. And I take a value of about 100. And for the zoom, I want this to happen on the brightest areas because where the light hits the mirror, the mirror gets bright and there we have our light streak. So when I change this to brightest, you can see this looks way better. But when we look closer to it, you can see that it looks a bit strange. And this is why I applied the effect not to the mirror ball composition, but to an adjustment layer. Because now I have finer control over it, because now I can control the effect through the opacity of my layer. 
So by hitting T for opacity, I can now fine tune my fast blur. And something about 50 looks just right for me. And also we wanna change the blending mode for this one. Let's set it to screen. Looks already really nice. And if I just play back a few seconds, you can see that the light is always catching the parts with the bright areas. Really cool. Okay, next step. We want to create some kind of smoke or fog which is making its way through the room so that it gets more of this party atmosphere. And for that, let's once again create a new layer and call it smoke. And for the smoke, I just used a turbulent noise. And just by default, it already looks like some smoke. Let me just play a little bit with the contrast and the brightness to get the look that I want. And something like 150 and minus 10 looks fine for me. And the complexity, maybe something like five. Okay, and once again, we can animate the evolution. We type in time times 120 and you can see that our smoke is moving. Maybe I add a, another fast blur behind it and just blur this a touch to get rid of all those fine details. And now let's hide it because I want to apply the smoke only in the middle of the composition at about the same size like our ball here. So to do that, go to the rectangle tool and just draw a shape around here. Now I can make it visible again and hit the F button to get my mask feather options. And by the way, if you hit M, you get the mask path. By F, you get mask feather. And if you hit M twice, you get all the mask options. So let's just increase the mask feather. And maybe we put a levels effect behind it and just bring those a little bit closer together to get a little bit more contrast so that the dark areas are really black now. Maybe we feather it even more, about 200 pixels. And now we once again change the blending mode. This time let's try it with screen. That looks nice. And we once again hit T for opacity and bring it up to a value that we like. About 16. And I also bring the mask a little bit more to the center. Here's another cool trick. Let me just hide the smoke for a moment. When you now hit on the mirror ball, you can reposition the mirror ball and the light will follow. And in this way, you can not only put it in the middle of your composition, maybe like so. Okay, and now I turn back on the smoke. And hope that you can see it, but I want to bring the opacity even more down so that it's just a saddle effect, this smoke here. For my final version, I brought some color in 
And I did that by once again creating a new layer, maybe call this color, hit OK, and we need a four color gradient. And we bring it out here, and the four color gradient is a simple effect. You can apply four colors to it, and then you can mix them or animate all of those color points. But I just leave it somehow at the default and one last time change the blending mode. Maybe this time we go with something like divide and we bring down the opacity to something like maybe 40. That looks quite nice. Or maybe you think, what the hell? This doesn't look nice at all. We get some loose in the color data and what's happening here. And I think this could be, if we take a look at our project window, that we are still at 8 bit per channel. So we can change that and then you will see that also the colors and the blending modes will react way more to the light by hitting down the Alt key and clicking on this 8 bit per channel. Now we have 16 bits per channel and I do this once again. Now we have 32 bits. So once again, 8 bit, 16 bit, 32 bit. Maybe bring down the opacity Let me make one last solid by hitting Control Y, make it black and call it BG for the background. Just bring it behind everything. And the reason why I did that is because at the moment we don't have any background at all. So if I click on this transparency grid toggle, you can see that it is just dark because by default our background is black. And so now I just created a black background and you can directly see what this does. And while we're at it, let's just make one last adjustment layer, call this glow and type in glow. Stylize glow and we apply it to our adjustment layer bring down the threshold, bring up the glow radius and bring down the glow intensity. Maybe to something like 0 0.2. And for the very final look, I always like to create a vignette. So once again, control Y, call this the vignette, hit OK. And I take this rounded rectangle tool. And here's a cool trick. When you now create your mask and leave your finger on the left mouse button, hold it down. And when you now scroll the mouse wheel, you can adjust the curve size. And once again, we hit M twice. Feather this a lot. And subtract it. Now we bring down the opacity once again, maybe to 22 or something, and we are finished. Let's quickly make a ramp preview. Now that looks really awesome. And now just play around with the new effects you have learned today and have a nice party time in After Effects.